Hi everybody, Keith from Honeybee Honey again. Got a nice, bright, sunshiny day today and uh, we're gonna work some beehives, but today I wanna talk about the third installment of my hive inspection series, which is to concentrate on that leg of my little algorithm, my little chart that concentrates on the queen and queen right. So at this point, we followed the algorithm through, we know we have a queen and now we need to evaluate that queen and see if she's a healthy queen or not. So stay tuned. Or in this video, I want to talk about you know, queens. And in that first leg, we evaluate whether they're, they're queen right or not. But now we want to delve a little deeper into that and we want to know if they're queen right, are they, is the queen healthy? So this part of the video is only going to talk about problems that are associated with queens, not problems that are associated with external factors to the queen, such as pesticides, disease, uh, chalk brood, things of that nature. We're only talking about things that affect the queen. The reason I think this is such an important topic is because throughout my entire beekeeping career, and it's still quoted today, that if you have a spotty brood pattern, replace the queen. The problem is, is that more than half the time, the queen isn't the problem in the first place. In fact, more times than not, it's pesticides, it's, it's uh, disease, it's virolamite. So replacing the queen isn't necessarily gonna solve your problem, and it's an expensive one. Uh, so let's evaluate a queen. The first thing is queen right. We know they're queen right. The first sign that the queen is failing or is sick or is not a good queen is that when you inspect the hive, you find supersedure cells. Now, supersedure cells are differentiated from the other two types of queen cells that you'll see. There are swarm cells and emergency queen cells. And then lastly, there are supersedure cells. So a swarm cell, when you see a swarm cell, it's, it's always on the bottom of the comb. Swarm cells are numerous. There's a couple dozen of them. And they occur in the spring usually. You can see them later, but they usually occur in the spring. Like supersedure cells, swarm cells are accompanied by a queen in the hive that's still laying egg. But they're a lot more numerous. Emergency queen cells, if you don't know what they are, they, emergency queen cells are cells that were built on the face of the comb. The reason an emergency queen cell exists is because the queen suddenly died. She was killed or died, and it was it was very sudden, so the queens didn't have time to, or the, so that the hive didn't have time to supersede her. Could have been beekeeper. Could the beekeeper could have accidentally squashed the queen and didn't know it. Uh, then what the bees have is only what they have available, which are the eggs she's already laid which is among the worker broods. So what they do is they take those eggs and they, they draw them out into queen cells and they start feeding them only royal jelly. Uh, emergency queen cells are easy to spot. They're easy to differentiate from a swarm cell and a supersedure cell. And that is because they're on the face of the comb. Now supersedures can, can be on the face of the comb, but a supersedure cell will be accompanied by eggs. Emergency queen cells, once they're drawn out, will no longer have eggs. One thing that needs to be stressed here is that being able to see eggs in the comb is essential to diagnosing anything in the hive. You have to be able to see eggs. And typically what you have to do is the, the, the cells are angled so to keep, to keep honey and brood in the, in the comb. So they're angled from, from low to high. And so you have to tilt the comb 
in the sun, put your sun, your, your back to the sun, tilt the comb so that you can see the back of the cell. Just, just move it until you can see the back of the cell. If the bees are superseding the queen, you know something's wrong with the queen. That's the first big glaring red flag. And to be truthful, beekeepers are usually the last ones to know. However, for, for reasons beyond my understanding, sometimes bees don't supersede that queen. Sometimes the hive consensus isn't to supersede that queen. So the beekeeper has to contend with that. So if you have a, a sick queen, the most common sign is that the, the brood is chaotic. You'll see spotty brood pattern. You'll see eggs, larva, and cat brood right next to each other. The little girl's saying hi. And the laying pattern is chaotic. So one of the best tools that you can use to, eval to evaluate all of this, one of the best tools you can use to evaluate all of these things is a camera. Uh, if you suspect a problem in a hive and you see a spotty brood pattern, and you don't see obvious signs of disease. That is, there's the cells aren't sunken, no perforated cells, the cells are healthy color, the, the brood is pearly, the larva is pearly white, lots of eggs. If you see those things, take a picture and mark that frame. I usually put a, I usually score the top bar with my hive tool to make a little X. I take a picture of that frame and then I come back at least five to six days later. And it will become more apparent as I talk. But what you're doing is you're taking, picture, you're taking a picture of a frame with the eggs in it. And then when you come back five to six days from now, you're looking to see if there are still eggs in those cells. If there are still eggs in those cells, then what is happening is that the workers are eating those eggs and the queen is coming back and laying in them. So when you look at a brood pattern, what you're typically looking at is cat brood. When you're looking at the queen's pattern, you look at everything. So you can see a whole frame of eggs. If, if you have a whole frame of eggs, that is an awesome queen, but she still could be failing. And the reason she could be failing is because of a couple of things I'll say in a minute. But you look at the, the brood pattern. Is the brood pattern all the same age? If it's not, and it's the middle of summer, there's a problem, certainly. But if it's winter, you may have different stages, but they should still be clustered. You should see eggs by eggs, larva, around the eggs or larva by larva and cat brood further out. Circular or compact, you can see either one of them. Um, so if you have a broken brood pattern, a shotgun brood pattern, and you have eggs all over in there, the queen is doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's not necessarily sick, but there, there's a problem because bees are are removing eggs from cells. If you see disease larva or anything like that, wait for the next video. But uh, in this situation, with queen problems, you're always seeing healthy brood. So a healthy larva, healthy pupa, and you see lots of eggs. There are two situations that are somewhat similar. The next two situations are situations that look almost exactly the same. One is caused by the queen and one is caused by overly hygienic bees or the, the, the offspring of the queen. So let's talk first about the first situation, which uh, I think is probably more common and it's becoming more common today. It's called diploid drone syndrome is what I call it. What happens is that drones are typically haploid, which means they only have one set of chromosomes, those of the queen. Workers are diploid, which have two sets of chromosomes, just like a human being, one from the, the mother and one from the father, queen, drone. What happens in a diploid drone situation is that the queen is laying eggs in worker comb. She's fertilizing the eggs. But the sperm that she's fertilizing the eggs with came from a very close relative or a brother. I'm going to make a totally different video on just diploid drone syndrome, syndrome later. I may have an example of it. Uh, but it'll sometimes clear itself up and that is because a queen mates with 15 to 20 drones and if she happens to mate with one of her brothers, during the time that she's using the sperm from that brother, you're going to see diploid drones. And what, 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 what you're going to see is a, a shotgun brood pattern with all healthy cat brood. And then you'll take your picture, be nothing but eggs and cat brood, maybe some larva, but you'll see a lot more eggs than you'll see larva and or cat brood together. You'll see that together. You'll see, you'll see that. That's a big sign take a picture, you come back next week, eggs are still laid all over the place. And only a few of them 
matured to larval to the larval stage or the pupal stage and as time progresses if it keeps getting worse and worse it gets worse and worse where you see a lot more eggs and a lot less larva and a lot less cat brood to the point where you know eventually the hive will die what happens is there's a number of stop gaps or uh, in in nature with the bees that prevents this from happening in the first place but uh, basically because of human intervention we now have queens that are mating with their brothers because queens are taken out of one hive the hive that they were originally uh, conceived and they're moved to a starter colony or a, uh, a nuke to raise another queen in which they have members that they're not related to so that causes a problem where she may mate with the hive that she was in in the first place and I've had and I've seen it happen I, I didn't used to see it happen 20 years ago but I see it happen a lot more now and what it is is that the queen producers are just producing way too many queens for their resources. The, the next stop gap or the next line of defense in nature for bees is that when a, when a queen uses sperm from a brother or a relative, a cl close relative, and she fertilizes an egg, her egg with that, it won't develop. It, it'll, it won't develop into a worker. It'll develop into a drone. What further complicates the whole process is that nurse bees recognize that. They recognize them as a diploid drone and they remove them, eat them, whatever. They remove that egg. And so then what happens is the queen comes back around and she lays in there again. So what you see in a diploid drone situation is shotgun brood pattern, some larva, also kind of shotgun, and you see eggs everywhere around it. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo to show you the actual egg laying pattern, but this is this is actual footage from a diploid drone queen, a queen that mated with probably one of her brothers. And you can see, what, the reason I filmed it is to show how excellent her egg laying pattern is. You can see that she's actually moving from one cell to the next and laying eggs. She's measuring a cell right now, and now she's going into the and laying the egg. Sorry about the photography, it's a little shaky. So her egg laying pattern is fantastic. When you look in the cells, you see lots of eggs and cat brood and a little bit of larva. That's all you see. But when I come back the next time I look at, I'm going to see eggs in the same cells again, or in, in a lot of the same cells, because she's laying eggs that will develop into drones. The workers are removing those eggs, and then she's just going back and doing what a good queen does, laying eggs in those cells again. Now in a second here I'm going to pan out and you'll be able to see a pretty spotty brood pattern and realize that there is spotty brood with nothing but eggs and a tiny bit of larva. A second case where you will see the same exact basic symptoms are an ov overly hygienic hive. Now because queen producers used to produce queens or se use selective breeding pro programs that bred for uh, honey production and gentleness and then along down the line you know, less use of propolis, all that kind of stuff. Once the varroa mite came into the picture, now queen producers select for hygiene. So they, they're looking for hygienic bees. One problem with that is I've had a few hives that were just overly hygienic. They were calling, they were calling uh, brood that had minimal problems that would have normally survived. And in the process, they're calling more than the queen's laying and the hive becomes basically a dwindling hive. So you'll see symptoms of dwindling hive disease, uh, which is a generalized term for when hives just dwindle down to nothing and then die. But you'll see the same symptoms. Uh, in this case, there's a prevention treatment. Usually what will work if you're seeing that happen, and, and, and really what's gonna happen here is you're not gonna know if it's a diploid drone situation or an overly hygienic hive until you do this. You come back, you see the problem, you take your picture, you mark your frame, you come back, you look at the marked frame, you see that, oh, there are nothing but eggs there again. Go to another healthy hive, a very healthy hive, where there is no disease present, none whatsoever. Get a frame or two of solid cat brood, insert it into the hive you're having problems with. If it's a diploid drone situation, those bees will hatch out, but you won't see any change in the pattern, you won't see any change, you just need to requeen because you have a diploid drone for sure. In an overly hygienic hive, what I've, what I've found is that when you add that much brood to a hive, 
when you give them that much work and that much more surface area to cover and to incubate, incubate, it it basically takes their mind off of culling so much brood. So then you start to see that pattern shift and all of a sudden you have a nice healthy hive. So that doesn't always work, but it but it does. It seems like it's worked for me every time that I know that it has existed, but it may not always work. In that situation, the best thing to do would be to requeen. So basically to summarize, you have, these are only queen problems except for the last one. And the only reason I mentioned it is because it looks, you, you can't tell it apart from a diploid drone situation. So, you know, first thing is you see supersedure cells, then you have a problem in the hive with the queen and the bees are trying to get rid of that. Most of the time, I did have a hive, if you watch my checkerboarding video, uh, that's what the bees thought was going on, was a problem with the queen, and they kept requeening. Uh, in the end, what proved to be the problem was, was toxic honeycomb that was uh, 40 years old, literally it was 40 years old, and it had had every chemical that beekeepers put into their hives in there at one point or another. And uh, once I replaced that comb, it fixed the problem. So. Uh, but the bees couldn't figure out what was going on either, so they kept trying to requeen. Since I have gave them new comb, they uh, had them pull new comb actually. Since I've done that, they have had no problems and the queen is still the same queen. I just saw her the other day. So, uh, but if you see supersedure cells, the, 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 the thing that you should normally uh, conclude is that there, there's a problem with the queen. Now, if you keep seeing that happen, which is what I saw in that case, if you keep seeing the, a new queen comes out, she's laying fine, nice capped worker brood, uh, and then they supersede her again, then you have to think that there might be another problem other than the queen, and the, bee, the, the hive just thinks it's the queen. So, supersedure cells, diploid drone situation, a sick, a sick queen, haphazardly laying all over the place. Those are the things that you'll see most commonly with a bad queen. Anything else, and, and we'll go through that in, in the next series of videos, uh, anything else in that, and you have a pesticide, a bacteria, a fungus, a virus, uh, whatever. You have some other problem other than the queen, and requeening won't necessarily help. Sometimes requeening does help because it breaks the brood cycle, uh, just like with Varroa, and you'll get a positive outcome even with a problem that wasn't really related to the queen but because it breaks the brood cycle you'll get that so because I've covered this in the last two videos I failed to mention it in my uh, actual footage but a drone layer is also a problem with the queen and this is a photo of a drone layer you can see she's marked green there and you can see that the cells are drone cells they're not worker cells so that's obviously another problem with the queen that would be the fourth problem that you can find and in this case you have you have to requeen one way or another you can take her out and kill her put in a frame of fresh eggs you can requeen using a purchased queen or you can use a swarm cell from a different hive or unite two hives that's how you can get rid of a drone layer and uh, sorry i didn't mention that in my original footage Okay, to summarize, if you see supersedure cells, the bees are trying to get rid of a bad queen, and it's best to either let them go or requeen yourself. I usually just let them go unless it's late in the year. This is the tricky one. If you see more eggs than you do see larvae, and more larvae than you do see cat brood, you usually have a diploid drone situation or a hygienic, overly hygienic situation. Also, if the bees are just starting to build up in the spring, disregard this. But if you see that, add two frames of cat brood, and then come back and check. If the behavior is still observed, then you usually have a diploid drone situation, in which case you will probably have to requeen. You can wait and see if it gets better. It just depends on how many drones the queen mated with that were related to her or brothers. However, if the situation corrects itself, it was an overly hygienic hive and usually it stabilizes at that point. Lastly, if you have a drone layer, you know, typified by drones in worker cells, then you have to requeen. That's all there is to it. In one method or another, you have to requeen. Now, drone layers sometimes kind of come on slow where the queen starts to go bad, and you'll see drone cells in worker cells, but you'll also have normal worker cat brood. But if you see that happening, she's going bad, and you have to requeen very soon. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, and uh, hey, I'll see you next week.